Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's short video entitled GPS Assisted Survey Using Ikehouse Sidekick. Uh, my name is Mike Kizimian, Ikehouse Product Manager at Advanced Network Devices. If you have joined our previous short videos, um, welcome back. If this is your first time joining our short how to video, we hope that you find it insightful and hope that you will join future sessions. You can always be automatically notified of any of the short videos by clicking on the subscribe button on the lower right side of the uh, video. We want to today discuss how we can conduct uh, GPS assisted site surveys using ECAO for outdoor surveys. In order to do that, we need some tools before we start. First thing that we would be needing is uh, a GPS receiver, which is NEMA compatible and conformant. Uh, we also would be needing a short leg tripod with suction cups or magnetic base. Uh, we need also to have a USB 3 port or more hub to connect multiple USB devices to and then connect to PC. And then we need the Ikaha Wi-Fi site survey. Uh, for the GPS receiver, which is NEMA conformant, we recommend the uh, BU353S4 GPS receiver from the Globes, Global SAT. Uh, the advantages of this uh, is that it has a suction cup and also it has a magnetic base so it can be easily mounted to any vehicle that is going to be moved. The next thing is we need a short legged tripod with suction cup or magnetic base so we can mount the Ikaho sidekick to this. Uh, finally, we would be needing the USB 3 port hub or more uh, to be able to connect multiple USB devices, which will be connected to the uh, PC or laptop, which will be used for the survey. Um, this is a typical setup that we would have. Uh, we would be having the um, site survey device um, um, or the Sidekick device connected to, to the tripod and then to the USB hub and then also the dongle if you have any uh, and then the U uh, GPS satellite receiver. Uh, you can see that we use the camera mount to be able to connect to the, the tripod to the Sidekick uh, which was easily done. Next thing that we need to do is we need to download the drivers for the uh, US uh, for the USB based global SAT GPS receiver. Either it is supplied with any GPS receivers with the software or you can download it from the any of the supported brands that we mentioned, the NEMA uh, compliant ones. Uh, these are the drivers that are installed for the for the this GPS receiver. And once we do install, the unzip file will run. And once we execute the software, um, it will automatically install. What we need to also be checking is we can go to the uh, device manager setup. And then we can take a look at the COM ports because the, the USB receivers will be utilizing the COM ports for uh, receiving the um, uh, terrestrial data and then pushing it into the ICAHO. Um, once we select that, we need to ensure that the baud rate is set at 4800, no more or no less. Uh, the data bits is 8, the parity none, uh, stop bits 1, and flow control none. This is what we used and it came out to be pretty uh, good for the results that we were receiving. Uh, and these are all the parameters that we set. Next thing that we need to do is if you don't have the uh, GPS gate um, installed on, on from the ICAO site survey into the laptop, you need to do that. In order to do that, uh, you need to go to the local draw, drive program files, ICAO, uh, the subdirector of ICAO, and then drivers, and then you can see the GPS gate uh, application, which we need to install. Once we install this software, we can go and use any of the um, map providers to be able to get the locality of where we want to conduct a survey for. In this instance, we use Google Earth uh, for this. Uh, be sure to follow any of the copyright laws that is required by any supplier of any maps. Uh, in order, we, we use this map because it provides coordinates and also it's pretty straightforward and we can also load the maps uh, into Ekahau with ease. 
so once we downloaded the map what we did was we we needed to triangulate three points prior to going to Ekahal. so we picked three points that is evident one is here I picked one is this location and one is this location we click on each of those locations and we get the latitude and longitude details it is recommended to use the latitude and longitude details because it will be needed later on the uh, as a name of the location that makes life a lot easier you don't have to note it down once you do that you go to the next next location do the same thing and finally to the last location and we do the same thing next thing that we need to do is we need to measure a distance from one location to the other location uh, and no, note down the distance. You can also use the pins in between to measure such distances as well that you use for the three location points that we use. But in this instance, I use from one uh, street to another street and I measured the distance to be uh, 2,132 meters, uh, roughly speaking. Next, we uh, need to also go and export this file. We recommend for high resolution uh, images and you can do that easily through the um, um, Google Earth. Once we do that, we load the map into Ekaha Wi-Fi Site Survey, which is uh, now on there. You can see all the pins have come already. Uh, then we first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the distance we measure the distance the exact same distance that we used and that will calibrate the map based on the distance we measured originally in Google Earth next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, put the three reference points for triangulation uh, in the software and uh, what we need to do is we need to click on the icon for GPS reference points and we go to each of these locations and we use the coordinates that we pulled from Google Earth and we place it into the map here for all the three locations. Once we complete this task, the software automatically will provide the uh, coordinate locations of all the three places that we use the pins for. So now we have the map measured and calibrated and we have three triangulation points available onto the, uh, into the we call Wi-Fi site survey software. Next thing that we need to do is we need to click here and we make sure that the, um, the GPS is enabled and there's a warning that says you will be using GPS data. So you don't need to do any clicking, GPS does uh, sort of say the clicking for you automatically it will pull the coordinates and it will insert it into the map as you are driving around or walking around once we click on the uh, site survey icon automatically uh, one if this is if GPU's GPS is enabled you will see an icon appear here uh, field it says GPS record on so we are ready to move forward now the way I mounted the uh, devices into my vehicle was I used the, uh, the global sat receiver as I mentioned it has a magnetic base so we used the magnetic space and it easily connected to the, um, to the front of the car. Next thing I did was I moved the uh, sunroof halfway through and I mounted the tripod and sidekick onto the mount on the on the sunroof and it was very very stable because it it had very good strong suction cups onto this. If you can also find a tripod which has the magnetic bases instead of suction cup, that can be also used. But you have to use it in the areas of the car where it's the metallic portion and then I pull the cables through the remaining portion that was open and you can see another image of the same thing and this is the image from inside of the vehicle you can see the suction cup mounted onto the uh, sunroof and this is the front view of the, the entire unit set and these all connect to a USB hub and eventually to the laptop once you start the GPS record on, there will be a blue button 
uh, created and as you walk or you drive around the software will automatically collect points and it will collect all the um, basically access points that are audible uh, within the drive path or the walk path outside and after about three kilometers this is the outcome of the results that I had received with the um, with driving around with the software uh, it's a Wi-Fi site survey and then GPS receiver and then sidekick the actual data is this data as you can see um, the, um, the interesting thing is that there's a lot of points here that are visible and uh, we can see um, there's a lot of uh, access points here on the map but it's way beyond that if I click here we can see we collected 1084 access points through our drive and the drive was uh, three kilometers and once we uh, go through and we uh, select the spectral data we can see throughout the survey all the spectral data and you can see as I was driving around you can see the orange point move along and we can see the details for every single path that we drove and we have the spectral data for both 5 gigahertz band as well as 2.4 and we can see the channel utilization for example as we are going back and forth in every single area and that's the way typically the software will behave and work in the uh, GPS assist assisted surveys. This concludes our presentation for how you can conduct a GPS assisted survey with Ikahao Sidekick and Ikahao Site Survey software. I thank you for attending this short video how-to session and we look forward to see you in the future uh, short how-to videos.